السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا افتح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today is a new day. This means we have another chance to practice the 10 outer actions that will get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These actions which we covered earlier have uh, uh, given us more time more chances to get prepared to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this closing session, I will try to link together what we covered during the past uh, 11 sessions. And I will start with a story. And the title of this story is A Chance That Will Never Be Repeated. So the narrator tells us the story. Yesterday, I went ba uh, back to my home. I was so tired. Uh, my wife told me, uh, why you don't uh, change and uh, rest a little bit so the food would be ready. And indeed, I went to my room. I changed my clothes. I uh, had uh, I I had a nap, but it was a long nap. I when I opened my eyes, it was uh, the voice of the caller of the event calling for us for prayer. So I went out of my room. And uh, I went to the kitchen. I found my, my wife preparing the table. And I sat. Uh, I took my seat on the table. And I asked her, what did you cook for us, my dear? She did not answer. I repeated the question again and again. But I had the same answer. No answer. I was so surprised. I did not get angry, but I was surprised. This is the first time that I ask my wife something and she ignores me. She didn't, she didn't pay attention to me. I turned to and looked to the door and I found my, my son Ahmed coming into the kitchen and I, I asked him to get me a bottle of water from the refrigerator but his response his reaction was the same as his mom I got more surprised Ahmed Ahmed is answering me is not answering me He's a very good son. He is, he is a very good, uh, he has the best manner going on. I tried, I wanted, okay, to leave the kitchen, but I heard my, my wife say, Ahmed, go and wake up your father. So tell him to come ready, uh, dinner is ready. I was really surprised. Ahmed went to my room to wake me up. So I called him and I said with my, with a loud voice, Hey, uh, I'm here. But he did not, he did not look even at me. And he went quickly and he left me surprised. 
and one one minute after that ahmed came his face was uh, uh telling so many things so his mom looked at him and she asked him did you wake up your father and he couldn't he 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 didn't know what to say he uh, he 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 said i tried mom but he i tried many times but he did not answer me hearing him i was more surprised what is this boy saying i'm here what is what's this boy saying so my my my, my wife went quickly to my room and uh, she was followed by my children they were all terrified so i followed them just to uh, to see what's what's going on so she was trying to wake up someone else who is on my bed he looked exactly like me he was wearing my the same clothes and he was sleeping the same way I, I, I do. That was surprising, very surprised, stunning. So when she, when she uh, uh, did not have an answer, when, uh, he, when this man did not wake up, she, she started to cry. And my children started to cry and they they everyone was trying to call that man on my on my uh, who is sleeping on my uh, bed and they were uh, just clinging to his uh, clothes trying uh, hoping that he will answer and i was unable to understand what's going on ya allah what's happening who is this person who is exactly a photocopy of me? Why no one is not hearing me? Why no one can see me? So Ahmed went quickly out of the house and he came out a few minutes later with my father and my mother and also my siblings and everybody started to cry. Everyone was, uh, my mom was um, hugging that sleeping person on my, on my uh, bed. And she was crying and crying like everyone. I went to her. I tried to, to, to touch her, to talk to her, to, to make her understand that I'm here next to her. But I couldn't. Nobody was listening to me. So I looked at my father. I turned to him. I tried to hug him. I tried to to talk to my uh, to my wife, to my siblings, uh, but no one was hearing me. My siblings went out to prepare the janaza, and my father was crying. He sat on the chair. He was unable to stand up. And I was so depressed of that nightmare. What's going on? I'm trying to wake up, but what's going on? So the, uh, the uh, person, uh, people started to come into the house. Uh, um the the responsibles try uh, they washed the body that was on my on my bed and my children helped with shrouding the body and they put the body in the in the cascade friends and family all came to the house and everybody was hugging my father uh, who was crying and uh, they were giving him condolences and they were co uh, giving condolences to my siblings to my children to my wife and they were they were uh, making dua for uh, mercy and uh, for, for for to be patient also the casket was taken to the to the masjid, so no one was left in the house. So I went immediately running after the janazah. So uh, 
everyone uh, everyone was uh, everyone uh, came to uh, the uh, janaza they all uh, uh, everyone came to the masjid they lined up after the imam and it was obvious that they are going to pray on me. So I was, it was so crowded, but I was able, I was able to uh, get into between the lines easily uh, without touching anybody. The Imam started the prayer and I was calling everyone, hey, I'm with you, you cannot, you don't feel me, I am, I am calling you, you don't listen to me, I am with you, you don't, you don't see me. Uh, when I did not have any answer, I went to the casket, I opened the cover, and I looked at the man who was sleeping in there. When I opened when I uh, opened the shroud, he opened his eyes and he looked at me and he said, my turn is over. I am, my life is done. But your life, you are starting the eternal life. I was with you all your life. But today, I am going to be buried. But you are going to, to go to have re a reckoning. I couldn't do anything. I found myself in the casket. And I, nothing was helping me. I am unable to see anything. I am unable to move. I am unable to, to speak. I was just listening to the imam finishing the prayer. And then they took me to the to the graveyard and I was put in the in my grave. And then they started to pour uh, soil on me. And then I heard footsteps of of the people leaving the way. At that time, I realized it was the end. Maybe it was the beginning of the end. But I had I had meetings. I had a lot of work to do. I had some debts that I haven't paid back to the to the to to people yet. I I want to write my will. I want to. I want to do something good. I want to command good. I want to uh, forbid evil. And suddenly, slowly, I heard footsteps coming towards me. Oh my God. Now, my deeds will be estimated. These should be even Karwanekir. They are coming to me. And I was, I was uh, shouting. I was uh, calling, "Rabbi Rjoun, Rabbi Rjoun, Rabbi Rjoun, Laali Amal Salihan Fi Ma Tarakt." Oh Allah, send me back. Oh Allah, let me go back so that I do righteous things. I be a good one. I'll be a good Muslim. But no one heard me. And nothing happened. While I was on, uh, at, the, at that moment, I heard my little baby calling me, Baba, Baba, food is ready. So I opened my eyes and I found my younger sister, my younger daughter, Mama, uh, just waking me up so to uh, to go to bed, uh, to go to have dinner with the family. For a second, I was I was just uh, getting 
myself back again. And I was sweating. And I said to myself, hey, my nafs, hey, my soul, you are back. So let me see what good you are going to do after today. It was a waking up dream. I was given another chance. This time I was given another chance. But when it's time for me to leave this dunya, I will never have another chance. So I was given another chance and I promised myself not to lose it. I promised to establish my prayers, to pay sadaqah, to pay zakah, to help the needy, to fast, to fast the month of Ramadan and to fast extra days during the year, to perform hajj, to have a daily word of Quran, to go to dhikr gatherings, to seek lawful, to be good to all creatures of Allah, I promised to command good and, and prevent evil. And I decided that I will follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and apply his sunnah. But what happens really when we die? Now we have a chance. But when we die, what happens? There has been an article written by uh, a Kuwaiti writer. His name was Abdullah al -Jawullah. So he said, when I die, I will not get worried. I will not take uh, worry about my body because it's going to, to vanish. But... I, I am going, I know what will happen to me. My, my siblings and my friends, my Muslim friends, they would, they would take my clothes off. They would uh, uh, wash me, wash my body. They would shroud me. They would take me out of my house. They would take me to the to the masjid they will pray on me they will take me to the grave and uh they 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 will bury me my things will be given away my books my keys my bags my clothes and if uh, my family uh were uh, were to do good, they would they would uh, give everything I have as a sadaqa so that that will benefit me. Life will go on. My job will be given to someone else. My money will be given to will be distributed among those who will inherit me. Even though I will be I will be asked about every penny where did i get it from and was it lawful or not or the first thing that will that i will lose is my name because when when i die they will say where is the body they will not call me by my name and when they want to pray on me, they will say, bring the jinnazim. They will not call me by my name. And when they will, uh, when when uh, they are ready to put me into the grave, they would say, get the deceased. So we put him in the grave. They won't, they won't say my name. So I will not, I will not think of my lineage, of my tribe, of my people, of my job, of my fame. These are things that are just for dunya. And people, they will, they will be sad, and they will be divided into three groups of people. Those who know me just. Um, 
by the name, they would say, oh, he passed away, Miss Keen. My friends, they will, they will feel sorry. They will be sad for a few hours, days, and then they'll go back to their own life. And uh, the third group will be in my home. They will feel the sorrow, and that will be also for a week, two weeks, a month, two months, a year. But then, like everybody who passed away, life, life again will go on. So, the story is done. The life story is done. But the real life, the real story started. It's the Akhir. It's the Akhir. You left everybody and nothing is with you except your deeds. So the question now, what have you prepared for your Akhir? What have you prepared for your grave? So beware. Cling to your prayers, to your faraid, and to the nawafir, to the prayers, to, to the good deeds, to Salat al-Layl, praying at night, so that that will help you to be saved. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, رَبِّ لَوْ لَا أَخْرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصْطَدَّقْ This is about someone who passed away, but he was not doing good, really good deeds in this life. So he would say, Ya Allah, let me, I wish you, you, you would give me just more time so that I would go back and I would give sabaqa. فَأَصْطَدَّقْ I will pay you. I will pay zakah. I will pay as He didn't say, I want to go back to make Amra or to pray or to fast. So this, uh, the, the scholars said, the deceased would say, I want to go back to give sadaqah because of how big the reward of sadaqah is. So just pay, pay, and give sadaqah. Now we would, we would ask, what is, is sadaqah just money? No. It's the good word is sadaqah. Smiling in the face of your brother is sadaqah. Being good to people is sadaqah. Having good manners is sadaqah. So, our life is a treasure that we should save. It's like someone who sat by the beach before Fajr, so it was still dark, and he looked around him, he found a small bag filled with stones so he took the the uh, uh, one of the stones and he uh throw it into the water of the of the sea so he liked the resonance of the water so he took another stone and he throw it and he kept throwing one stone after the other. Then light, uh, uh, the sun rose and there was light. So there was only one uh, stone in the bag, one stone left. So that man looked into the stone and he found it a jewel. 
So he discovered that all the stones that he has uh, thrown into the water, they were all precious stones. They were jewels. So he said, oh my God, how, how bad I was. I, I, I was throwing stones. I was, I was throwing these jewels that I thought they were just stones just to enjoy the, the resonance of the, the water. I swear that if I knew it was just jewels, I wouldn't have wasted one of them. Unfortunately, we are all like that man. The, the bag of stones, which is the bag of uh, jewels, is our life. which we waste hour after hour uselessly. The resonance of the water, of the stone on the water, is the, the dunya and the pleasures of the dunya. The darkness of the night is the heedlessness which we live in. And the pleasure breaking uh, up is the reality. And this reality happens only when we die. We wake up when we die. So our days are jewels. We should save them. We shouldn't waste our time. We should use our time wisely so that we do not, we do not feel sorry. We do not, we, we do not feel sorry when the feeling sorry will not be helpful. So our hours, days, weeks, months, Years are precious stones. They're valuable stones that we should keep and not waste. We have to be careful. We have to take advantage of every single moment. We have to use our time to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to connect to our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that he directs us to the right path that leads to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to truly love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and follow his sunnah. We have to learn good manners from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and apply them. He says, أَقْرَبُكُمْ مِنِّي مَجْلِسًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَحَاسِنُكُمْ أَخْلَاقًا The closest of you to me on the day of judgment are those of good manners. So, we have to have good manners. We have to learn how to have good manners. It's loving the beloved. This is one of the best ways so that we are saved. The non-Muslims look at Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at our surah, at our, uh, how, how, how we uh, react in this dunya. They don't look at him in his real picture. So if the picture, if our actions are good and they will look at him in a different way, they would say these are the followers of Muhammad. So we have to love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Same way that uh, Sayyidina Adam uh, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him 
because of, of his love, because of Allah's love to Muhammad. He says, Samihni li ajli hubbika li Muhammad. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, said to Adam alayhi salam, how, how do you know that I love him? Sayyidina Adam said, when I looked up at the throne, I, I saw his name is next to your name, is connected to your name. And you will not connect your name to a person um, unless you love, you love him the most. Loving the beloved. This is Allah's love to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Things loved Allah, so, uh, loved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was at the uh, Mount Uhud, he said to the Sahaba, Uhud, Jabal yuhibbuna wa nuhibbuh. Uhud is a mount, mountain that loves us and we love this mountain. So love here, it started by the mountain and then Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu loved the mountain. So we have to love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then he will love us. He cares about us, yes. But we want to make him love us. We want to be coolness of an eye to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another Another example of the things that love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the love of the trunk of the tree to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to give his khutbah, he used to uh, stand and lean against the trunk of a tree. Then they decided to build a pulpit for Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, so that he would be raised a little bit so people would see him uh, and that would be better for, for the khutbah. So the first time they, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, uh, uh, after the pulpit was ready, so he went up and give the, gave the khutbah, started to give the khutbah and all people heard the crying of the trunk of the tree. He cried because the trunk of the tree cried because he felt that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is away from him. He couldn't bear it. They built uh, the pulpit to Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and that pulpit was the reason that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is not leaning against this trunk of a tree. So what happened? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stopped his uh, khutbah. He went down and he hugged that trunk. And he said, he hugged, he hugged that trunk. The trunk calmed down. I'm sure we all wish that we were that, that trunk to get this hug from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have to practice, to practice love. One time, one of the wisest people was asked, what is the difference between a person who just utters the words of love and a person who love who who lives love. He said, "Okay, I will I will I will uh, explain to you." He invited them the, the to to uh, uh, big feasts, and um, he started with those who just 
say the words of love, but they don't know the what what it means actually. So he, uh, when when this this group of people were uh, uh, at the table, uh, they were given first the soup, and everyone was given a very long. A spoon to eat with a one meter spoon and they were to eat this soup with this big huge uh, uh, spoon they tried but they could not and all of them uh, uh, spilled the uh, soup and they could not eat it so everyone was hungry the wise man said, okay, now look at the other group. So there was another feast for those who have love in their hearts, who practice love. And when they were uh, at the table, they were given exactly the same uh, uh, spoons, long spoons. And they were given the soup so that they have to eat. So each one looked at the spoon and he took the spoon, he filled it with soup, and he was feeding the person in front of him so that uh, they all ate and they were all full they thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so in this dunya whoever thinks of just feeding himself he will stay hungry all the time but whoever thinks of the others whoever thinks of feeding his his uh, brother in Islam his brother then they will both be full So there are steps of love, steps to do before we love. We have to clean our hearts and we have to uh, shine it. And then love will uh, sprout in the heart. So how? Would we love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? First, first of all, by knowing him, by following him, by applying his sunnah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, talked about, about the real love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He talked about following Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and obeying him. He who obeys the messenger has obeyed Allah. So we have to obey Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to know him, how he lived as a husband, as a father, as a grandfather, as a teacher, as a, a, a leader, as a friend. We have to know Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to be in the presence of those who love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because love transmits through hearts. And we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the, the love of his Habib. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Ghafir, Ayah 60, Du'uni astajib lakum. Ask me and I will answer your, your calls. So when your heart starts to feel the love of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then you have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Ibrahim, If you thank, then I will increase you. If you thank me, I will increase you. 
So what's the the fruit? What's the result of of loving Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Sending salawat to him. And we all know that sending one salah to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us salam ten times. So, now we are sending salawat to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the closest of you to me on the day of judgment will be those who sent the most blessings upon me. Whoever sends the blessings upon me, Allah will send blessings upon him tenfold. And then the result of loving Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his is gaining his companionship in in on the day of judgment and he says al mar'u ma'a man ahab and where is sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in al firdaus wal a'la then inshallah by loving sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we will be with him in al firdaus al a'la so loving the, the the beloved is our goal so Uh, we have to know that who we are loving. We are loving Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who is a human, but not like all humans. He's a human, but he is the, the one whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala loves the most. He's a human whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored him with the banner of hamd, with the banner of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is going to argue Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to intercede to his ummah. So... We have to strengthen our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as we said, we have to make lots of dua. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has given us uh, certain times that uh, that the rewards are multiplied. This is the month of Rajab, Sha'ban, Ramadan, the night of Isra and Mi'raj, the, the uh, 15th night of Sha'ban, the 10 uh, days of Ashur Dhul Hijjah. So these, the, these times are like a fuel station for us to get fuel that will be the sustenance for our soul for the whole year. So we have to do our best during these blessed times. We have to take advantage of these, these chances that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. So, with this, subhanAllah, we, when we practice these 10 outer actions that we have covered for the past 11 sessions, then we will get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will be more prepared to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When, when, when it's our death, we want to be of those who, whose death is easy. Who have husnul khatima. Who die on the best land that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. 
and who die when when they have their best actions have been done. So with this, we conclude our part one of this series. And inshallah, we will uh, we will have another uh, a group inshallah, another uh, session which will be part two. And this part two will will uh, focus on the heart, on purifying the heart uh, fr from blameworthy characteristics, anger, envy, st st uh, stinginess, um, love of this world, pride, self-admiration, and a lot more. So, until we meet with our part two of these series, I will send your salam and my salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us st stay steadfast on the right path the, the path of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that would lead to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we will be of the winners on the day of judgment. Wa salli allahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.